Hi guys, this is D from Chimera Search Productions, and today we're doing the Noob Report. Wait a second, this is my, not my channel. Where the hell am I? Oh right, I'm with the Noob Next Door here, Cody Price. What's up, guys? This is Noob Next Door, and you have just officially found out who Comic Man is. Yes, I'm an amazing being with the power to create comics from nothing. Yes, he is. Um, so yeah, guys, today <laughs> we're gonna talk about what we're expecting in Assassin's Creed Four. And um, before we talk about the story, we're going to talk about the actual gameplay and the gadgets and whatnot. So um, one thing I know I would definitely like to see back that, has, that was not in Assassin's Creed 3 but was back in Revelations is the hook blade. Oh man, I love that thing, jumping from place to place using the hook blade. It was fucking the awesome. The hook blade was really cool, and I was really upset when they took it out in Assassin's Creed 3. I really liked the whole idea of the longer jumps, and the, the zip lining was probably the best part. Yeah, it's like a bit of um, Bioshock Infinite going yeah, on there. I think it could really help out in Assassin's Creed 4 in like the concept of grabbing onto another person's pirate ship. And helping, like, that would really help out a pirate, honestly, in my opinion. I agree 100%. And on that note, I would like it very much if we were able to actually capture enemy pirate ships, but not only just make them our ship, but make them part of an armada. Since, you know, you are a captain. Therefore, you should become an admiral by the end of this. Yeah, that, that would really be cool if they had, like, ranks and stuff. And... Um, I don't believe they had it in Assassin's Creed 3 where you could take over somebody else's ship and actually keep it, but like you said, that would be really cool. And then every ship is unique, so it would have different stats, different speed, different power, all of that. Not only that, but they would actually have to, um, you know, kind of give a limit on how much crew you can have. Therefore, you can give, like, um, this amount of crew to one ship while you spread out your crew amongst other ships. Yeah, uh... But it also can be... You know, allowing you to get more crew members, therefore deal more damage yeah, during that battles. Would, that would definitely help out. And um, another thing I would definitely like to see back in the game that was not really as strong in Assassin's Creed 3 as past Assassin's Creed is the apprentice part of it all. Oh yeah, I loved that. Ezio with his entire army of little assassins. That was great. It actually was one of the main reasons I kept uh, playing. Assassin's Creed 3 did have some sort of apprentice sort of feature but it was yeah but it wasn't the same and um another thing that would be pretty cool if they would bring it back would be the bomb building because yeah. uh, the bomb building was like they introduced it in revelations you're like sweet now we're gonna be able to make our own smoke bombs or own grenade sort of thing assassin's creed 3 whoa it's gone where'd it go yeah and you would think that it would become more important there especially because of the fact that they're using more gunpowder yeah. weapons in fact, it would be awesome if you could make, like, explosive cannon, you know, fire that could actually tear yeah, apart enemy would, ships. Would really be, it would be more realistic in a way, too. Like, Yeah, like putting extra gunpowder in the middle of the... You know, I don't know how fucking science works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what else would be nice? Uh, the trading system from Assassin's Creed 3 sucked, so they should take that out, in my opinion. I know, and I think the most tedious part was the hunting. I mean, I loved going around all the cities in the first two Assassin's Creed's, going to the top of the towers. That was awesome. But when I had to start hunting beavers, <laughs> freaking beavers, I was mad. Yeah, the Assassin's Creed 2 through Revelations definitely probably had the best sort of a uh, map, world map sort of thing. Uh, Assassin's... And it would be nice if they could actually... Um, I'm going to be totally against what you said earlier about the trading thing, but in a different way. Hear me out. What if they had a trade economy, so that way you could get more money depending on which place you trade with because of your entire armada of ships? Yeah, that, that would actually make the trading cool. The, the trading in Assassin's Creed 3 was not that great, but if they were to do something like that, it may bring like a fun, uh, more fun feeling to this trading and a more especially especially if depending on what kind of state that each country is in it would also depend on which enemies you have to face yeah yeah they could i mean with today's technology i mean it's coming out for next gen consoles they could definitely find a way to do all of that i don't see why they couldn't i mean heck they did it with <laughs> fallout i mean it's not that hard apparently yeah, and um <laughs> 
uh, well, that's pretty much it for gameplay, probably. So we should start talking more about the story-wise. Oh, jeez, the story. This is actually where I know we're going to just die. <laughs> <laughs> just, just crucify us now. Thank you very much. <laughs> So, yeah, um, Assassin's Creed 2 to Revelations had the best storyline in all of Assassin's Creed history, in my opinion. Uh, I agree 100%. There was so much lore about the Assassin's Guild itself, but also about Desmond and what's been happening in the real world. Definitely. And I know Desmond was in uh, Assassin's Creed 3 as well, but I don't even know if he died or not. Everybody says he died, but I kind of have a feeling he didn't die, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the modern-day world part of Assassin's Creed 3, or 4. <laughs> well, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm more interested in less of Desmond, more along the lines of what's going on with the Assassin's Guild in the current time, because as far as I know from the Assassin's Creed story, they really aren't doing anything, and when they are doing stuff, it seems really freaking yeah, evil. it does, if, now that you mention it. And um, Assassin's Creed 3... Um, the Assassin's Guild, you were like the only assassin there was, except a few recruits you got. So you kind of remade this guild, but, like, that's a good point. What are they doing? Like, the Assassin's Guild isn't doing anything until you showed up. This dude was just sitting in his house waiting to die. <laughs> in fact, it would be interesting if, depending on where you go, because one of the things that made Assassin's Creed the first game great was how many different cities there were. And if they re-employed that... So if you went to somewhere like Spain and you talked to the assassins in Spain, they were actually talking about their future plans and maybe why we're not really seeing much of the assassins. Yeah, that, that would be really cool, too. Like, uh, we were talking about this earlier, too. If It would be really cool if you could go to, like, a variety of different countries. Like, you can go back to Italy, back to, back to Rome, all those places that you were at in the first Assassin's Creed game, and yet see how the guild is doing there. See if it prospered after Ezio and Altair. Um, but you know what else would make it really interesting overall, aside from the gigantic world mechanic? Maybe depending on what kind of reputation you have in each of those countries will depend on what skills you learn from each of the assassin's guilds. Yeah, that would be really interesting. I think that could, uh, that could fit. fit. Like, like, for example, an Arabian assassin's guild would focus more on the stealth aspect or the tricks. Yeah, like, uh, like the smoke bombs and stuff like that. Exactly, or they may focus more on the venoms because there's so many venomous yeah, creatures and, there. Uh, it would be cool too, is with uh, with each area they had their own sort of uniform customization that you could do, and it's different every area you go to. Oh my god, I would love to be a pirate ki ship captain who looked like Jafar. <laughs> that That's would what be I was my thinking. dream. I was thinking just <laughs> having the big turban on your head. Totally <laughs> yes. Uh, it would it would almost make the game hilarious at some points. But that's what makes it better, because, on in my opinion, when I started playing Assassin's Creed, it was the absurdity of the game mechanics that actually got me, because when you were killing someone, you could hear them dying in the background and just walking away, nothing <laughs> like, like nothing's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you could hear them screaming, and you're like, nope, yeah. nothing happened. <laughs> um, another thing about it is, um, since Assassin's Creed 4 takes place... Before Assassin's Creed 3 in the Animus aspect, I don't think so in, like, the real-world modern-day aspect. Um, I would really like to see why uh, Haytham, Connor from Assassin's Creed 3's dad, became a Templar. Actually, that is interesting. I really want to know about that. But at the same time, I'm more interested in what's going on in the future at this point. Because... We've seen what's happened in the past, and from what I can tell, in Black Flag, this is going to be a very pivotal moment in history. It's the discovery of the new yeah, world. Yeah, there's pirates like Blackbeard. How tight is that? <laughs> exactly. Blackbeard, the most feared pirate of all time. Well, maybe not of all time. That goes to Leif Erikson, but he wasn't a pirate. He was a fucking yeah. pirate. <laughs> but, um, uh, also... Oh my god, can you imagine a Viking Assassin's oh, dude, Guild? That would be freaking... They would be unstoppable. <laughs> you know they would focus more on brute strength but i don't think that they would act that's why they're not really big in the assassin's world why they wouldn't yeah, be mentioned because they were more yes we're gonna kill you not we're gonna kill you without you knowing we're gonna kill you <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
But at the same time, you've got to give some props to um, what they're doing at Ubisoft over there because their last few games have been really good, like Far Cry 3. Yeah, I Ubisoft loved it. Ubisoft has been doing really good lately. I'm really excited to see how good they're going to do with Assassin's. But, what? but for every gem that they have, there is a piece of rock. And this rock I'm talking about is the fact that they keep putting off sleeping dogs. Yeah, definitely. But, um... Sticking to the topic of Assassin's Creed uh, and the, like, whole past thing, I I would like to see more of Connor a little bit. Like, maybe some aspects of him, but I doubt they will, honestly. But um, I would really like to see if he does anything against this, or even Edward, his grandfather, does anything against slavery. Because Connor is really against slavery in the game. That you, It's not really spoken, but it's, it's implied. And especially since his mother was a slave at one point, and the only reason he exists is because his mother was freed from slavery, and then she thanked her savior with sex. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just hilarious to me, because it's so true. <laughs> like, if you see the scene, too, like, he gets, he kills this guy for something, trying to get into this cave. He gets there, he's like, oh, it's not the key. He looks at this chick, they just, like, kind of stare at each other and talk, and then they, yes, make a baby. <laughs> Wait, is that how babies are made? Two people just it's sit in a cave and, and talk and to each yeah, other? Yes, that's that's <laughs> what happens in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder the world is so screwed up. So, um, I, if I did, if that happened with every person I ever talked to, so many kids I would have. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I um I if if they let you go to any other countries besides America, I would be it would most likely probably be Spain. Because that's where, like, all the exploration came from, to America. Yeah, you know what I would like? I would like for us to actually meet Christopher Columbus and see how much of a terrible person yeah, he that, really that is. that would be pretty cool if they... They'll probably have Christopher Columbus, honestly. I mean, it's the new world sort of... Yeah, but if they made him, like, terrible, that would I would love that because it really is true to history yeah, then. like... Assassin's Creed usually has a lot of, like, history, and they try to stick to an actual historical time, so I would... Speaking of which, we probably should avoid... We should avoid guns, because they're inaccurate as heck. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, just I, saying. Um, when they had guns in Assassin's Creed 3, like, I, I saw it coming, but I kinda... I wasn't a big fan of the guns. I never really used them. I loved the crossbow in Assassin's Creed, uh... Brotherhood and Revelations, and I loved the bow and arrow in number three because it was such a stealthy ranged weapon. But frag grenades. Yeah, but um, guns are yes, like I don't know, they're too, they're too unassassin like. But you know what would be cool? What if there was like a mission, and hear me out here, where you could sneak into another pirate's lair or ship, and you took their gunpowder and you actually. Made it so that way when they tried to fire their guns, it would blow up in their oh, hands. Oh, that would actually be pretty cool. Almost like uh, that old... I don't remember which cartoon it was, but they put a carrot in the barrel, and they shot it, and the gun exploded. Yeah, Dude, that's Looney Tunes. Tunes. <laughs> like, <it's something laughs> How could you I, not I know it's Looney Tunes? It's, it's a so carrot! Awesome. That would be kind of cool if you could kind of make a sort of stealthy like plug on the cannons that they didn't notice, so that it would totally just backfire and blow this whole ship to smithereens without you even... The best part is, you wouldn't really have to do much. You could just weld, like, a small piece of metal on the inside that nobody would notice, and it would just yeah, backfire. Like, I think I think that would be really cool. Like, even if, um... Another thing I would I think would be really cool, and I think that everybody will agree, is if you could pull your ship up to another one, have somebody else take over as pilot or captain of the ship, and, um, everybody... Just kill yeah, everybody on the other one like, ship. Say a few of your troops or sold pirates, whatever, not all of them. Crewmates. Yeah, that, like, instead of, like, taking them all and leaving one guy in command of the whole entire ship, you only take, like, a small section of them and you jump over and you just start killing everybody. And that's when the whole... Well, you know what I think would be interesting? Instead of... You can actually have the option of either, like, killing every single person on the ship or just killing the captain and taking over the ship from there. It would allow you to get more crew members because, let's face it, pirates are not loyal they, they overall. 
Exactly. And if they see that you are the stronger and more superior captain, they'll follow yeah. you anywhere. And it would actually, I also, uh, like, I agree with that, that that would be really cool. But I also think they can make that even better with, uh, depending on the ship, each, like, crew kind of has its own personality. And some crews will side with you if you take over their ship. Like, oh, this guy knows how to run a ship. We're going to get more loot with him. Or some guys are like... Oh, so it's more like a kind of a pirate ship versus imperialist yeah, right. ship. And then other people will be like, oh, well... I've always been true to this captain. I'm not going to change now, and they won't go with you. Well, of course, you're always going to be like scragglers, but I would love if it was kind of an option of whether or not either to kill them or just, you know, have them get into a lifeboat. That that would be, like, really cool. That really would. Especially because it would have you win over the affection of your crewmates. Like, they would respect you more because you let him live. All right, guys. Well, I uh, I think we've said enough for this ep- or not. Wait, Cody! We have to do oh, shameless advertisements! wait a minute. We have to shamelessly advertise something. Alright. Well, um, as some of you may or may not know, I have been working on a Pokemon ROM hack, and... Which is totally awesome. I've been playing through it, and I love and it. <laughs> if you're wondering how he's playing through it, you could check the description for the download link of the first beta, which has just been released officially today. And I would... Ray! <laughs> and I would highly appreciate it if you did. It would. Uh, I really love feedback, so always give me some feedback. And um, I don't. Know, should we tell them what the ROM hack is about? Um, let's give them a teaser. All right. Well, I know like exactly what it's about, so let me hear what you think it's about. Okay, it basically goes like this. <clears throat> Long ago, when Kanto was still young. A lot of terrible things happened, and the entire region was destroyed by a ton of earthquakes, and everything was kind of buried. But then, then, everything started to become rebuilt. Pallet Town became anew, as did Pewter City, so on and so forth. The entire region has changed completely, and your entire quest is to go to this new region, face the evils that have brought been brought by this new team called Team Spectre, with an underlying evil beneath the whole thing. Is that accurate? accurate? Except, uh, it's not a long time ago because it's after Fire Red. (laughs) Yeah, but there lies the joke. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it is called, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I said it. It's called Dark Rainbow. Pretty sure I said it. And it's not as gay as it sounds. Yeah, it's not. I, I like made the name (laughs) up out of nowhere. I was like, it sounds kind of stupid, but it's not. (laughs) not stupid <laughs> it really is not i can vouch for and this but then again no one of you know who i am so until you know who i am just imagine that i'm the man behind the curtain and not the one from the wizard of oz because that was kind of bs yeah i was expecting a real wizard at the end of that movie i know wouldn't that have been awesome and i was like what the hell was this crap Okay, let's put that on the list for later. We're going to have to talk about the Wizard of Oz at one point. So yeah, guys, um, <laughs> check that download link down there. Check out the new Obscura region in my new ROM hack. And that is going to be it for this episode and the first episode of the Noob Report. Brought to you by the Noob Next Door and... D from Chimera Search Productions! His YouTube page down in the description. Not yet. No, 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 no. Don't check my patch. Please. Wait, no, what? Not so, yet. <laughs> so we can't check out your YouTube page down in the description? Well, you can, but there's nothing oh. there. <laughs> so, yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Not Check yet. later, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> he's going to have a lot of great videos coming out, great reviews, and all of that sort of stuff that you love. So... Yeah, that's right, guys. I'm going to be doing a lot of reports on, like, older games, um, comparing old cartoons to new cartoons, and a lot of story-based stuff. But I'll probably do a lot of that stuff also here on the Noob Report, so don't ignore my good friend, the Noob. The noob. <laughs> so, guys, this the has noob. been us, the Noob Squad, from Noob Report, and we are saying goodbye. Goodbye! Peace out.